You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310 and we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310 The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. AudibleTrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Borth. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Tuesday, 9th day of February, 2021. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. If you can't see the screen I have up, go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered at about 30 seconds. That will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. On the days you're out of the office, away from your desktop, point any internet-connected browser to cfrn.net slash live. There you'll find a live, real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds. You just won't have access to the chat box. And being able to access the chat box allows you to ask questions and participate in the discussion. We also stream live on YouTube at youtube.com 
slash CFRN. We've also archived over 1,600 daily shows right there on our YouTube channel. If you happen to be listening to this broadcast after the fact as a podcast on iTunes or iHeartRadio or Spotify, wherever pods are cast, if you want, if you're not driving, if you're driving, keep your eyes on the road, but if you're not driving or operating heavy machinery, you can hit pause on your podcast player, point your browser to youtube.com slash CFRN, find the date that corresponds with the podcast you're listening to, hit play, and you'll not only have benefit of the audio, but video as well. And with that, let us open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your blessings, for your mercy, and for your grace. We thank you for this broadcast. We place our work and ourselves in your hands. We ask that you would anoint our creativity, our ideas, and our energy, so that even the smallest task brings honor to you. God, when we are challenged, guide us. When we are weary, energize us. May the work that we do and the way that we do it bring hope, life, and courage to all with whom we minister to through this broadcast and everything we do at CFRN. I ask now that you bless our administration with wisdom and discernment and all of our traders with commitment and compassion and courage and strength. Rooted in your love, may your face illuminate everything we do. And in your name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okie doke. Happy Tuesday. Let me give you the numbers here from around the world. These are the cash markets, the indices, as they're called. We'll start in the U.S. Tight trading today so far, and it will be reflected here in the numbers as I give them to you. Starting at home in the U.S. The Dow down 18 points. The NASDAQ up 33. S&P 500 down 2.5. And the Russell 2000 up almost five. No movers and no shakers. In the commodity basket, crude oil up 18 cents, trading 58.15 last. Gold up $2.90, trading 18.37.10 last. Silver down 19 cents, trading 27.38 last. In the Asian markets at the close, Nikkei posted a gain of 117 points. The Shanghai rose 71. The Hang Seng gained 156. And in the European markets at the close, FTSE up 8, DAX down 48, and the CAC up 5. So around the world, no movers, uh, no shakers. Well, the Shanghai, hang on, Shanghai was up 71 points, so that's a gain of about 2%. Now, we're into uh, the Chinese New Year. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the show today. So we have a green day in Asia. We have a mixed day in the UK. And it is a mixed day here in the US of A. With that, uh, we'll go to Michael and get a recap of everything that happened this morning in the live training room. After that, I'll be back and we'll go over the concierge trade alerts from last night. We'll go over the Logic 247 alerts from the last 24 hours. All that and, of course, answers to your questions. If you're in the audience, you have a question, put it in the chat box. If you're watching the YouTube live stream, 
I will do my best to monitor that chat box as well. So if you have questions, type them in. Don't be shy. Uh, introduce yourself if you're new. Uh, we'd like to get to know you. So Michael, if you're ready, you can take it away. And if you're not quite ready, that's okay. While we're waiting on Michael, we'll go to a data right. chart. Oh, there he is. I'm here. He's right here. I, I, just, um, I am ready to go. Okay, go. You can take it away. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. So, Dwayne, while you're still there, mm -hmm. you still there? I'm here. Okay. Um, today I was thinking in the room, you know, if I get the levels to look for on the 30-minute chart, like this one right here was a BBC uh -huh. on a 30-minute chart. I can post them in the morning session so people can see the important levels on the 30 minute chart and how we approach them. Uh -huh. well, I think that's on a 40 minute chart. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent so, idea. Just a thought. Okay. So, ready to get started. Okay. Here we go. All right. Much better day than yesterday. <laughs> um, of course, that wasn't hard to do. Um, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, the ninth day of February 2021. Um, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you're going to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today, we made one tick in crude, 51 ticks in gold, and we're break even on the ES. Today, it took seven minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're $130 a contract, and we took a total of 23 trades today. So on the month now, we're at $4,942. That's over seven trading days, averaging $706 per contract per two-hour trading day. And we are now compiling new statistics starting today. It's our first day since, since, uh, since I didn't get the goal for the day and our first day of the year since I didn't get the goal for the day. But we did go 237 consecutive days and every day so far this year, except yesterday. Um, anyway. On the year now, we're at $19,277 a contract. That's over 26 trading days, averaging $741 per contract per two hour trading day. Okay. All right. So that said, um, let's go. Well, let's go here. If you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take the free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net and scroll down to where it says free five-day trial right here. Click on that and it'll be brought to this page, eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. You can tell us your biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one training just for you. Hit the send button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click that link, we don't know that you took the free trial. So you have to click on that link, okay? Okay. All right. Um, that said, let's get into the actual trades. Now, most of our trading was on gold, so let me go through the other the other markets first. Okay. On the ES today, um, we said early on that it was going to try to get back up to this weekly trading zone, and it did, and it went right through it actually, right here at 9:45. Um, it went right through it, and then it was trying to get back down to it all morning. Um, there was one trade here that I missed. Where it went down, it almost got there. A trade here that I got with a break even, another trade here with a break even. It eventually got down there, <clears throat> it dropped right through it, then it started to consolidate. And that was at the end of the morning session. It turned around and it started, this is during the break, it started to move up, um, giving one long opportunity right in here. And that was pretty much it. All right, that was the ES. We were break even twice on the ES today. Um, crude oil. Now, um, we're looking at crude. You see this green line right here? That's from the 30-minute chart. It's the PBC on the 30-minute chart at that time of the day on crude. All right, now we're looking at it at two periods. One was at the 11 o'clock period right here, and one was at the 11.30 period right here. Okay, to see where it was with respect to those things. Um, you see at the 11 o'clock, it came up, it tested the BBC on the 30-minute chart came back down off it, then it went back up to it, and it went through it um, at the 1130 mark. 
it went through it and it continued going up. Okay. Now the close of it not being a down close at the 11:30 mark was significant. Okay, suggesting it was going to continue going up, not down. Um, you know, Duane will get into all that in a few minutes here. But anyway, the trades that we took on crude. Um, hold on. All right, the first trade was right here. On our first trade, we picked up five ticks. Then we stopped out, minus eight to put us at minus three. Then we picked up three here to put us back to zero, one there to put us at plus one. And that was pretty much it on crude today. Okay. Gold, we had a lot of trades on. So let's go back to the very beginning. Here we go. Gold started out a little choppy here. And then our first trade on gold was a break even trade. Our next trade was right in here. We picked up four ticks. Then we picked up nine ticks to put us at plus 13. Then that's where we got our goal for the day. Then we picked up 10 ticks to put us at plus 23. Then all this was happening really fast. And I actually had to restart um, DT Pro at that time because my data was coming through in chunks. Uh, but the next trade that we ended up taking over here, we picked up a couple of ticks. Put us at plus 25. We had a break even there. And three more ticks to put us at plus 28. Then over here, 10 ticks put us at plus 38. Then we stopped out, went back down to plus 30. Then we picked up two ticks there to put us at plus 32. Then eight ticks here to put us at plus 40. Looks like a break even there. Uh, we missed a couple of trades in here. This would have been a break even. This would have been profitable. One tick here to put us at plus 41. Uh, five ticks here to put us at plus 46. Four ticks here to put us at plus 50. Um, a break even there, a break even there, a break even there, and then one tick there to put us at plus 51 on the morning session. Okay, all this stuff right in here. If we'd have just stayed in this one trade, we'd have saved these two break evens right here. And we'd have probably still gotten a plus one tick on that. Um, let's see, during the break in here, there was a shorting opportunity right in there. And a follow-up right there that would have been a momentum short trade break even. Um, a long right here that would have been profitable. And that was it on gold. But it was a pretty active morning on gold today. Um, do I have time to explain why I took any one of those trades? The... These right in here, Michael, these right in here, they were all closes below the trend line, every one of them. Okay, you see, I drew the trend line there. The entry point was a down close. Um, this one, I didn't draw the trend line, but the entry point was a down close below the trend line. This, the entry point was a down close below the trend line. Okay, same thing on this one. Every one of them put it in a lower swing up until this one. That's why I was still looking for trades on the downside. Um, over here, it was closed below the trend line, put in a lower swing, closed below the trend line, didn't put in a lower swing, so I wasn't looking for down closes anymore until we got a new lower swing in place. Okay. So what I wanted to make sure was step one, that we had a trend. Okay. And that the trend was continuing. And every time it expanded down here, it continued the trend until it got right here. And then it didn't continue the trend until we got here. And then it did, but then it didn't give us any trade setups. Okay, not until way over here. So I'm looking at the trend in small pieces right here, but it all goes back to the larger trend. Okay, so step one is make sure you have a trend. And there it is. All right. So, uh, let's go back here first to this page. Um, if you've not taken the free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Scroll down to where it says free five-day trial, no credit card required. Click on that. It's going to bring you to this page, eminitrainingschool.com. On this page, all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. So you can tell us the biggest training channel so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training just for you. Hit the send button. You'll be sent a confirmation link. Click on that confirmation link. And then we know you took the free trial. Okay. Once you click that link, we get an email. Um, hang on. I'll answer your question in just a minute. Um, 
<clears throat> once you click on that confirmation link, we get an email that says you took the free trial, and then we can send you all the information you need. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. Um, on the spreadsheet right here, um, for us, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you could read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the ninth day of February 2021. We made one tick in crude, 51 ticks in gold. We're break even on the ES after a couple of trades. Put us at plus $520 a contract on the morning session. And today it took seven minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $130 a contract and we took a total of 23 trades. So on the month now, we're at $4,942. That's over seven trading days, averaging $706 per contract for a two hour trading day. Um, we did go 237 consecutive days of getting our goal, but now we're on our first consecutive day of getting the goal. Okay. Um, on the year now, we're at $19,277. That's over 26 days, averaging $741 per contract for a two-hour trading day. Okay. So 706 on the month, 741 on the year. Okay. All right. And that's it for the morning session. Now, wait, I want to answer Talka's question. What causes my horizontal lines space to change as I move through the charts? The horizontal line space. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Horizontal lines are lines that go up and down. And I'm sorry, the lines that go, the lines that go across. Vertical lines are lines that go up and down. Horizontal lines are the lines that go across. Um, the space, I'm not sure what you mean by the space between which horizontal lines. No, I think I was talking about gold and drawing lines, like these lines right here. As price moves, for instance, let's bring this dom up. Where is it? Here it is, way over here. As price moves up and down, you know, the line's going to move on the chart. Let me pin that one and we'll go to the very end. You see right here, price right now is at 1837.4. So it's 1837.4 right here on the DOM. And as price moves, then the line's going to move. You see, like this line right here would go like this right now. It would go like that. Okay. And then as price moves, I'm going to move the line. Like this line right here originally would have gone like that. But then because this wick stuck out of the bottom, I would have moved it like that. And then we didn't have a trade set up down here in the slingshot. So, you know, neither one of these lines really mean anything right here because we don't have a trade set up here. But if we had, like, let's say over here, for instance, that's how the line would have been to begin with. This would have been the close down below the line. If this actually hit the BBC, you wouldn't need the line because the cycle down here is red and below the green line. So you could have shorted from right there. And if this didn't actually hit the BBC here, then you could have shorted from right here on the close down below that trend line. Okay, either one of those would have been a profitable trade. Enough to get the goal for the day in a single trade. Okay, did that answer your question? I just want to make sure I got your question answered. Okay, I see you said sorry, phone rang, but I don't know if it means you're on the phone right now. Well, every bar is four ticks in height. Okay, every single bar is four ticks high. So that's not gonna change. Every single bar has to be four ticks high by design. So the difference between lines changes eight to six. Again, I'm not sure what you mean by horizontal line. You know, the number of ticks in profit that it went, like the down close here, that dropped all the way down here. Yeah, the price on the right is always going to be is always going to be four ticks high. It's not going to be eight. It's not going to be six. It's always going to be four. 
always. See the R right there? It means range. Now I could change that if I wanted to. You can see I do have an eight tick range bar and a three tick range bar, a four tick range bar, a 30 tick range bar. You just go to custom like this. And in here you can set it to whatever you want. I want four ticks. Okay, because that suits my risk strategy. Now, if I had a different trade setup that had a different risk strategy, I may have a different size range bar. But you're never going to see an eight tick or a six tick on a four tick range. Okay. Right now it shows six tick price on the axis. You talking about these numbers over here? Okay, these numbers are just showing where price actually is. Okay, now some of these numbers may be based upon the actual values of these lines, but the one that's moving around, that one right there, 37.8, that's saying that price right there was at 37.8. It's saying it's bouncing off 37.8 right now. And now it just moved up to 38. Now the highest that this is going to move up is going to be 38.2. And there it is right there, 38.2. Now the lowest that this is going to move would be 37.9 right now, because that's four ticks down. There's 37.9. That's because you're not looking at the same thing. If you right click on the chart and you go to properties, right here where it says show runners, that is going to change the values over here based upon what the actual indicators are doing. So if I right click, actually if I go to view all active indicators and I choose this right here, and I go to properties, you see how it says show runners on? That means that as price changes, it's gonna change over here on the side. I think that's what you're getting at. See if I shut that off, now it's not. See, and it looks like this is the one that has show runners on. Let's see, show runners, yeah, see? Now I don't have anything over there because I just shut everything off, okay? But to turn on just price over there, go to view all active indicators, select the symbol, go to properties, then right here where it says show runners, turn that to on. Now that is gonna reflect where price is at any given time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I answered that. All right. So with that, we can pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona in Studio A overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. Natalka, if you have any more questions, just email them to support at CFRN.net. Support at CFRN.net. Okay, I'll get back to you. Okay, so we're headed back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. There we go. We are in fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Recap of the recap. Uh, today it took seven minutes and three trades to get to $130 per contract. Good job. Good yeah. job. All righty. <clears throat> Back on that roll. There you go. Hold it, Kidoke. Uh, let's see, guys. We can start here real quick before we go to the charts so far this week logic 247 that's our around the clock e-mini alert service the alert channel opens sunday night at 6 p.m eastern stays open around the clock till friday afternoon at 5 p.m eastern when the globex market closes for the week today's tuesday so we're in the tuesday session the Tuesday session will end this afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern. 
And then tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern, the Globex market will reopen. And that begins the Wednesday session. Once Globex opens, then we have the Asia session. We have their open. Then at 3 a.m. Eastern is when London opens. And as of course, you, as you know, Wall Street opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. But we track all the markets. We chase the sun around the globe from Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern to Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern. So since Sunday night, we've issued 37 alerts total. Still waiting on the results of eight. We've had 29 actionable alerts, of which six have been stopped out based on not risking more than $300 per contract per trade, less when possible, using market structure and a very simple three-step methodology that I teach all of our traders. Over the last 132 weeks, we've averaged 20% getting stopped out. So this week, uh, so far, we're at 21%. And there's a reason why we're at 21%. And I'll show you that as soon as we go to the charts. But while we're here, let me just go ahead and show you what the alerts look like in case you happen to be new. Here we go. Last week, which was week 131, we had a total of 84 alerts, 21 never triggered, two carried over to this week. We had 61 actionable alerts, of which four were stopped out based on the same risk profile. We don't want to risk more than $300 per contract per trade, less when possible, based on market structure. So. 7% last week, not a typical week. A typical week is 20%. Sunday night, this was the start. We had two carryovers. Uh, the Dow, that was an alert from Friday that never triggered. We carried it over, triggered Sunday night. S&P, same thing. And then the first new alert that came out Sunday night, the time you see here is Mountain Standard. Telegram, which is the messaging client we use, reads the clock on your computer. So if you're on the East Coast, it'll show East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, it'll show West Coast. My charts, when we go to the charts, my charts are set to East Coast. If I could set Telegram to East Coast, I would too, but it doesn't give me that option. Now, if you're on the trial, we want to have a meeting this afternoon, uh, 15 to 20 minutes because I need to make sure that you understand everything that the trial involves. I want to make sure that you have access to everything from the charts to the indicators to the telegram channels, the alerts, everything, and answer any questions that you have. And so I'll be sending an email out shortly to everyone I'm aware of that is on the trial. But if you want to make sure that you get included in that meeting that you get invited to that meeting, then you can put your email address here in the chat box. Nobody sees it but me, Michael, Valerie, or you can just email Valerie support at cfrn.net and just say, hey, yeah, I'm on the trial or I'm getting ready to start the trial because it's really important that you understand the trial is more than just two hours each morning from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Eastern. That's a very big part of it. That's where we teach you the basic strategy, uh, the underlying principles upon which markets work and our strategy works. But there are other pieces as well, so we wanna make sure you're able to get the most out of your five-day trial. All right, so, uh, Sunday night open, the first new alert to come out uh, was a long on the S&P. B stands for buy, T stands for initial target, potential resistance, second target, then the final trade to target, so the weekly trading zone. Every alert will have a final trade to target 
If it's a long, it's the weekly trading zone above. If it's a short, it's the weekly trading zone below. This was alert number 6,433. When Valerie comes through to do the recap, she notes where price was or what the swing was at the time she came through to do the recap. Price may have continued on past this point. It's just a point of reference. You can take the alert and you can go look at your chart and you can see where this particular move ended, okay? All right, so that was the S&P long, Russell long. Uh, this was long on the Dow, long on the NQ, long on crude oil, long on gold, long on silver, stop out on silver, long on gold. That was all Sunday night, now we're into Monday. S&P long, Dow long, Russell long, long on crude oil, stop out on gold, stop out on silver, long on the Russell, short on the NQ, S is sell, initial target, potential support, second target, weekly trading zone, final trade to target. Stop out on the S&P, still waiting on the Dow. I uh, got a long here on crude, long on silver, long on the NQ, long on the Russell, still waiting for that one to trigger, long on gold, uh, still waiting on this S&P. Stop out on the S&P, a short on the Dow, short on the NQ, short on crude, still waiting on those. Short on gold, long on gold, long on the NQ, short on silver, short on gold, and a stop out on crude oil. So that's everything so far this week since the Sunday night open at 6 p.m. Eastern. Now that you've seen the actual alerts, what they look like, this will make more sense to you. 37 total alerts, what I just showed you. Eight we're still waiting on to trigger, get results. So far, 29 actionable, six stopped out, 21% of actionable alerts, okay? So that's how you read those. Those come around the clock. It could come at 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. We have traders around the world. So our day session is their night session and vice versa. If you don't wanna be uh, woken up during the middle of the night with your phone making the little telegram sound just turn off notifications for telegram while you're sleeping and when you're up and ready to go to work just turn notifications back on so we'll go to a daily chart of the s p i think we will there it is okay now we've been stuck two days here from yesterday afternoon to now at this, this was an all-time historic intraday high yesterday at 39.11 and a quarter. And then this little candle here, this is today's candle. We put in a high today at 39.13 and a quarter. So we have a new all-time historic high in the S&P 500 E-mini futures. And since we have a slightly higher high, got to adjust our fibs to embrace the new high there we go okay now our Fibonacci price extensions that doesn't change because that is based on this low to this high this retracement low and what that does is it projects prices using the golden ratio 14th century math no pandemics or politics just math gives us areas where we may find 
resistance. You can think of it as an obstacle. You can think of it as a target. It's both. So if we can take out today's high, then the next price extension overhead is 39.78 and then 40.54, 41.63. But the market is having trouble getting out of this area. The green line that you see on the chart, that's called the BBC, just stands for bull bear cross. When price is above the green line, we're bullish, we anticipate higher prices. When price gets below it, we're bearish, we anticipate lower prices. Higher, lower, higher. Now, back on November the 4th, we closed above the BBC. So we were looking for higher prices. And you can see that price pulled back to the BBC again and again and again. And some sessions we even spiked it. But by the end of the session, these are daily candles, buyers came in, drove it back up. Another pull back, another run. Okay. It wasn't until January the 27th that we had our first close below the BBC since this day right here, November 3rd. That retracement at the time, based upon this all-time historic high, sent us to the 24% <clears throat> Fibonacci retracement. Now we have a new high in place. So our fibs now go from the low, which hasn't changed, to the new high. So this is the 24% Fibonacci price retracement, 37.49. Now in order for price to get to the shallowest possible fib retracement, it's got to take out today's low and then the step line, okay, which is currently 38.91, that's potential support. And then you got blue and climbing, and that's currently about 38.56, 38.57, potential support. And then the BBC, that's the big one. When price gets there, we expect a nice bounce. If the bounce holds, if the pullback holds, and the bounce is strong enough, then that may give us another leg to the upside. If the pullback fails to hold, then we got a shot at the 24% FIB. Again, that's the shallowest possible retracement on the daily chart based on the last leg up. The low put in October 30th and the high put in today. All-time historic high. Now, in previous days when we've put in new all-time historic highs, like here, okay, you see the retracement. Here, you see the retracement. The fact that price is not, there doesn't seem to be enough buying pressure uh, to rocket this thing up out of here. All the traders are looking at each other. Who's gonna move first? So this may turn out to be the high uh, for a while. We remember all of these were very shallow retracements. Even on the days we spiked it, the pullback held, it held, it held. This is the deepest retracement right here that we've seen since back in October. So important numbers overhead, potential resistance, 39.78. We also have a weekly trading zone at 39.30, which is right above us. And then the highest weekly zone for this week is 39.74 slash 75. And then just above that is that 50% extension. Below us, important numbers, you might write them down, 38.91, 38.56, and the really important one, 38.22, okay? Now, 
We don't trade off the daily chart, but this is where we start our trading day. We want to know where the major support and resistance is because price trades from support to resistance, back to support, back to resistance, over and over again and again. Now, some people will tell you, oh, that's old fashioned, that's horse and buggy, you know. Don't you know there's quants and algorithms and all kinds of stuff that you need to buy so that you can figure out these markets? Well, all the indicators and all the oscillators and all the algorithms in the world don't change what I just said. Price trades from support to resistance, back to support, and back to, re it's been doing it since the inception of the markets and it will continue to do it until the markets no longer exist. Okay? I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. So, we've got our high altitude view of the market. Okay? We know what's important overhead. We know what's important below. Now, the fact that we've been these last two days pretty small candles. Okay? Today, especially, it's not an inside day because we did put in a higher high today, but just barely. And I'm always cautioning you about new highs or even new lows that are minimal. Okay, again, yesterday's high 39.11 and a quarter, today 13 and a quarter. So we put in a new high, but only by two points. So we broke it, new high, you'd think there'd be celebrations and champagne corks popping and we would be blazing a trail to the upside, but we're not. So be careful on the long side. All right, let's go to the 30 minute chart. This morning, let's go back to the open last night. Now we caught a rally late in the day yesterday. We had uh, an alert to be long 39.03, and it took us up to 39.13 and a quarter. Okay, that's the all-time historic high. And you can see that when we ran up and put in that new high, it didn't stick came right back to below the previous day's closing high, okay? So from 39.03 to 39.13, 10 points, $50 a point, $500 per contract traded. This morning or overnight, here's the London Open right here, this candle. So we made the run, and then comes the retracement. Price didn't quite make it back to the BBC. When we get a shallow retracement like that, it the follow through often looks like this. Be with a leg, and then a retracement all the way back to the BBC, that gives it the energy to put in a new high. Remember the definition of an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows. Well. We've got a high and a lower high and a lower high. We're starting to see some movement here, but we don't want to get long yet. And let me show you why. That all time historic high, which is uh, not even one session old yet. It's overhead. It's potential resistance. Now, where we're at right now lines right up with that swing high. These two are so close together. So, what do we have? Uh, there's a window there of like 39.12, you know, to 39, not even 13. 
So there's, there's not enough room to put on a high probability, low risk trade. Now it may rip right up through there and that's fine. We, we have no problem being patient, waiting for the market to hand us a high probability, low risk trade setup. This isn't it. What we want to see happen is we want to see price take out this high. We want to see price then pull back into this area. Hold the pullback. And then if it continues to move higher, that's when we'll be interested in trading it. But getting long right here, kind of like, you know, cranking your car up in your garage and instead of putting in a reverse, uh, you put it in drive and you just slam into the wall right in front of you. So be patient. If this is going to continue, if we're going to make it to the next weekly trading zone overhead, and that's what price does, it goes from zone to zone to zone. We've published the zone since December 14th of 2009. So we've got a zone at 3900 slash 3901. When price drops to a zone, we expect it to be good support. And it was. We spiked it. But it held. Okay, Each one of these candles. Uh, this one here oh, might have closed, you know, a tad underneath of what was the closing price. Uh, 38.99.75. So yeah, one tick. That, hold, that held. Now, if we come back over here, when price moves up to a zone, we expect it to be good resistance. Back here, you can see as price got above the zone and pulled back, it held. We rallied again, pull back, it held. The zone held and held and held and held. Okay, we go to the next zone overhead so from 77 to 3,900, uh, this was actually 3,877 slash 78. So that would be 22 points, okay? Zone to zone, 22 points at $50 a point. So that's $1,000 per contract move from zone to zone. Once price, pulls back to the zone and holds like this. Once it gets above the BBC, the green line, now markets are fractal in nature. So everything I said about the daily chart, nothing changes when I go to the 30 minute chart. Or if I go to a five minute or a one minute or a volume chart or a range chart, the underlying strategy, the underlying principles are the same. So we get above the BBC, we make the run to the zone overhead. Remember on every alert, if it's a long alert, the final trade to target is the weekly zone overhead. On a short, it's the weekly zone below. You'll have an initial target, then maybe a second target, maybe a third target, then you have the final trade to target, okay? So price tried, to get through the zone, couldn't do it. Came back to these highs, which was a previous weekly zone at 38.85. That's why it's in yellow. So that zone, that previous weekly zone was on the way up, was resistance, resistance, resistance. Finally overcame it right here on the Sunday night Globex Open, okay? overcame that area resistance for one two three four five 30 minute candles so two and a half hours when price runs into resistance can't go any higher why because no one's willing to pay a higher price uh, the high of this candle was 3900 and a half nobody was willing to pay 3900.75 had they been, it would have gone up another tick. So when price hits resistance, can't go any higher, it's gonna turn around and go and look for support. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard before, what was once resistance 
often becomes support. This is a beautiful example of it here. What was once the ceiling becomes the floor. It's all kind of clever ways of saying it. But this is what it, when you hear that, this is a beautiful example. Resistance, 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 support, support. All right, so price came to support. When price comes to support, it can go no lower. It's going to turn around and go look for resistance, which it found at the zone. One, two, three 30 minute candles. We spiked the zone. Zones are an area just like fibs. We could not close above the zone, which is 3900 slash 01. So what happens? Price goes back to support. Support sends it back looking for resistance. On this candle, we sliced through the zone like it wasn't even there. Only three things happen at a weekly trading zone. The most likely, the most common, the thing you're going to see again and again and again, consolidation. This is 70, 75% of the time, okay? Uh, down here, when price dropped, consolidated, 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 up here, consolidated. 70 to 75% of the time, that's what you expect. Which is, that's why if you're, you know, two points away from a zone, you're not going to go long because you're going to, again, drive into that brick wall. You don't want to do that. Got to have room to run. All right. The second most likely thing is rejection. And I don't have a good example of rejection on this screen, so I'll show it to you when we come across it. And then the third and final thing that can happen at a weekly zone is called the slice. Okay, That's when price slices through a zone like it's not even there. Typically on a slice, what will happen is when the move runs out of steam, price will retrace to the zone that it sliced through. And this one did. It just took a lot longer. Usually happens, you know, within a couple hours. Remember, these are 30 minute candles. So price comes back to the zone it sliced through, consolidates, and then continues in the direction of the slice. When you have price coming down to a zone like this or coming up to a zone like this, you see those wicks sticking up above, and here you see the wicks sticking down below, okay? That's a market filled with indecision. And what's all the indecision about? All-time historic highs. You know, nobody wants to be the last man that bought, bought the last contract at the last highest tick. The highest tick today, 39.13 and a quarter. There are traders out there that went long at 39.13 and a quarter. I don't know them personally, but they're out there. And they're wondering, will it come back? They're, they're praying of the trader's prayer. Oh, dear God, let me get back to break even and I'll never do this again. Prayer and hope are an important part of our life. Uh, but they're not good trading strategies, okay? Pray before you trade. Praying in the middle of a trade, asking God to move the market for you. I, I went into detail on that yesterday. He doesn't, he doesn't work that way, okay? All right. So we know where, we know why, okay? Market is having issues here, so back to the 30-minute. That area that I just highlighted for you, okay? We expected resistance. We got resistance. That's why we didn't want to go long here. Now, if price can somehow turn itself around and take out that high, well, then we've got to deal with this high, okay? Where's price going now? Most likely back to the BBC. Price always reverts to the mean. And in our case, the mean happens to be green. So 
We got blue and climbing down here, which is support. Red and falling is resistance. See how as price tried to move higher here, it hit red and falling. This kept driving it down. So price could get back on top of it, again above the BBC. That gave us this move. We took out this trend line. And I'll turn that into, there we go, I just extended that trend line possible that we come back to the top of the trend line okay we hit it here 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 we got on the other side this is called a trader Vic because a guy named Vic wrote a book and included this little setup in it so people started calling it the trader Vic so where price comes back to just kiss the top of that trend line and then continue in the direction that it broke out so what happens when price gets back to the trend line will be important. Is it going to be support? If not, you've got support times three right here. When price drops to the BBC, we expect that to be good support. That's the green line. Blue and climbing. When price drops to blue and climbing, we expect that to be good support. When price drops to the step line, that's often good support. So there's three reasons here why the market, if it gets through the trend line, will find support. If it can get through all three of those, then there will be a window of opportunity here. Won't be much, because uh, the zone is 3900 to 3901, so you would need to get in by at least 3903. And I don't like cutting it that close, when I put an alert in the channel, the reason uh, I'm able to show you the results that I showed you over the last 132 weeks, 20% on average get stopped out based on the risk profile that I explained to you. But that's because we're patient. That's because we exercise discipline and that's because we wait for the market to give us the high probability, low risk trade setup. And this one I think is gonna be just cutting it a little close. We won't know what market structure is until price gets here. Okay. Price rarely travels in a straight line. So all kinds of things can happen on the way down if we get back below that trend line. All right. Now, along with the logic alerts, which come out around the clock, we also have the concierge trade alerts. These are different. The logic alerts are based on current price action. The concierge alerts are based on historic price action. The concierge alerts are designed to be forward-looking guidance for the entire session. I put them out a little later than normal last night. I usually get them out shortly after the Globex open, which is 6 p.m. Eastern. Got them out last night at 7.45. The way you handle these is when they come out, go to the charts of the markets that you trade, put a line in the sand, okay? If you wanna grab a screenshot of this, go ahead, five, four, three, two, one. Got it? Okay, all right. So when that report came out last night, our traders went to their charts and they put a line in the sand at 39.15. Is 39.15 is just above here, okay? You gotta be very careful being long on the way up to this CTA. If price gets to 39.15, the idea is to be long at 39.15 or only looking for long trades above 39.15. The short side is 38.96, which is right here. Everything between the two lines and the sand that you draw is the market making up its mind what it's going to do. Often, what will happen is price will walk right up to a CTA and do exactly this. That's rejection. This isn't a weekly trading zone. 
But you see how price came down, touched it, headed in the other direction. The CTAs, again, are for guidance for the entire session. So as price drops and gets below 38.96, you only want to be looking for short trades. Above 39.15, you only want to be looking for long trades. In between, while the market's making up its mind, there are logic alerts based on current price action so that you can trade whatever's in front of you, okay? So price still trying to work its way down. We'll come back and look at it in just a moment. Our range on this session, we've got a high at 13 and a quarter. We've got a low 38.95. The last couple days have been pretty compressed compared to the big ranges that we've seen in the last weeks, months, couple years. Now, over the last couple years, we have had a few weeks where price would get stuck in a sideways struggle. And that's typically when we put in a new all-time historic high. The market goes flat. So we won't sit and watch. And this is why we use a fast time frame in the training room so that Michael can show you as many setups as possible during the two hours that you're in the room every day. If he were using a 30 minute chart like this, you'd mostly be just waiting. But with the fast time frame, he's able to show you the trade setup over and over and over and over. Everything that we teach you is fluid across all markets and all time frames. That's important to understand and important to remember. You don't have to learn one way to trade the S&P and another way to, way to trade crude and another way to trade gold. Our method, our strategy, all markets, all time frames. In the morning in the room, when Michael goes from chart to chart, he doesn't change anything. And as we go through these markets here, you'll see that all my charts are identical. Okay. Where does price go? From support to resistance, back to support, back to resistance. The weekly trading zones, you should think of those as fixed support and resistance for the entire week. Once we publish them on Monday morning at 6.15 a.m. Eastern, they don't change for the entire week. They're carved in stone. The indicators are your dynamic support and resistance. Fixed, dynamic. If price comes down, we expect this cluster here, any one of those three individually would be potentially good support. The fact that all three of them are bunched up together means that they probably will be support. How long it holds, we don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen next. No one does. It's not how God created this universe. He chose not to give man the ability to change the past or know the future. And those two things are inextricably linked for eternity. I know that you go to some trading websites and they try to convince you that they know what's going to happen next, but I'm just telling you the truth, they don't. Now, what you can know with certainty is what the next high probability move is. And there, that's a world of difference from knowing what's going to happen next. We know on every market, on every time frame, what the next high probability move is. And 20% of the time, the market does something other than the next high probability thing. Why? Because order flow changes. What is order flow? It's all the buyers and sellers in the marketplace, institutions, retail traders, everybody in this market right here, right now, buying and selling or creating order flow. If there are more buyers than sellers, price will go up. If there's more sellers than buyers, price will go down. So the next high probability move here is just simply a drop to the trend line, which may or may not hold a support, and then a drop to here, 
which we do expect to be good support. Unfortunately, if we drop and find that support, you've got potential resistance right overhead. So knowing what the next high probability move is doesn't always translate into a high probability low risk trade setup. Knowing what the next high probability move is can help you stay out of situations that you don't want to be in. So let's let this do its thing and we'll whip through the rest of these markets. Okay. The Dow. CTA number last night on the long side was 31 330 which is right there swing high so far 31 328 okay that's how CTAs work price will walk right up to it if it doesn't like it it'll turn around head the other way the short side 31 190 right there so we spiked it down to 72 so it's 18 points five dollars a point but we never closed below it did we spiked it and then quickly reversed price got rejected here price got rejected here on this one we dropped ah, to 31 144 so 45 points off the top of my head. Yeah, $5 a point. Okay. But what's Bryce doing? It's still trying to make up its mind. It's still between these two lines. Now, we've had logic alerts this morning on the S&P, on the Dow, Russell, NQ. Those come out round the clock. These lines in the sand come out once per session. Okay. Next is the Russell. Try that again. The Russell. Okay. Now, the Russell this morning, and I put a chart in the discussion group. And we also have a discussion group that in Telegram, we have a private discussion group, and then we have one open to the public, and that's open 24-7, 365. And because we have traders around the world, there's almost always somebody hanging around. And because we monitor the markets around the clock, if you have a question, you put it in that discussion group, you'll get an answer. If I'm not around, one of our traders can most likely answer your question because everybody uses the same method, the same strategy, the same indicators. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody speaks the same language. Every trading group out there has their own little buzz, buzzwords and abbreviations and things that they talk about and look for. So when you come into our group, you might hear some terms that you're not familiar with, you know, like the BBC or red and falling or blue and climbing. You'll learn those quickly because there aren't that many of them. And before you know it, you'll be speaking our language. You'll be on the same page with all the rest of our traders. Okay. All right. So this is a no fly zone or a no trade zone. Our indicators do a great job of putting you into high probability, low risk trades like these. But when these two indicators go flat like this, on the 30 minute chart. You don't want anything to do with that. Price is above the BBC, then it's below, then it's above, then it's below, then it's above, then it's below. You get uh, chopped pieces, okay? Some people call it chop. I call it consolidation. You call it whatever you want. Just don't try to trade it because traders will have a great day like this and do well. And then the next day, they get wiped out, and then some, 
and they don't understand why. Well, here's this is a beautiful example. This is good trading. This is not. Now, price just broke above a weekly zone at 2295/96. This pullback, okay? That's just starting. The pullback holds. We will have an opportunity to the upside and there will be an alert published in the channel. Okay? Got one more zone overhead for this week on the Russell. Today's only Tuesday. 23.32. And here you can see price came up. This zone is 2247 slash 48. So price came up, hit the zone, couldn't get through, consolidated, pulled back to the BBC. This pullback held and this pullback held and this pullback, that's what we expect. The pullback holds more often than it doesn't. Couldn't get through, resistance. Turns around, looks for support. Found support. Made another run at that zone. This time it was able to get through. And zones are an area. We got up to 92.4. The zone's 95 slash 96. That sent us into this consolidation that lasted from 11 o'clock last night Eastern till this morning. Actually, yeah, 11 o'clock last night to 11.30 this morning. We finally came up out of that area. So we could have a really nice trade setup coming. What will happen, the BBC will rise. Price will come back. And if they meet up at the zone, that's always a beautiful thing. We would then have a long trade, which we would expect to go at least to this swing high. And if it can take out that swing high, there are no obstacles in its path of getting to this zone. Now, from zone to zone, that would be 32 and 5. That'd be 30, that's a 37-point move, zone to zone, at $50 a point. But we got to wait the retracement we need the market to prove itself show us that it's going to hold once it starts its journey back to challenge this high that's when we want to get in okay so now you make a sandwich you walk the dog do whatever it is you do write poetry get on the elliptical just don't trade every alert in the alert channel and currently in the alert channel there are over the last 132 weeks we've published 6467 individual alerts every one is a trend trade as defined by a 30 minute chart okay now some will see a counter trend opportunity here. Well, if you're expecting it to pull back, then I'll just short it on the way down. Now, there's, there's nothing wrong with a counter trend trade, just in my opinion, and that's, that's all it is. My opinion is that a counter trend trade does not have the same high degree of probability that a trend trade does. So that's why out of 6,467 individual trade alerts, there are no counter trend trades in the bunch. Last night's numbers for the Russell, the CTA number, 22.99 on the long side. 22.99, right there. And the swing high. 
2309. So from 99 to 2309, it's 10 points, $50 a point, $500 per contract traded. Now, it triggered and ran up to 2304. So that's five points. And then you'll see that it got back below the trigger, triggered a second time. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So this is by no means unusual. In fact, once an alert triggers, there's a greater probability of it triggering multiple times than not triggering multiple times. So it's triggered once, triggered twice, one alert, two triggers. If price drops below the trigger, wherever it finds support in here and heads back up, that'll be the third trigger. Uh, the short side for the Russell was 2261. Remember everything between the lines and the sand is the market making up its mind. Now, as price came out of this consolidation and started to move up, we wouldn't go long here because we know that 2295 slash 96 is potential resistance. So we want to see price get well above that. That's why this entry was at 99. Okay, so that covers the Russell. Next on the list, crude oil. Hmm. The next zone overhead, the highest weekly zone this week for crude oil, is 59.10. Okay. Below that, we're at a zone, just above a zone. We got a zone at 57.85 slash 90. And you see how his price came up, see how it consolidated? It was a little leg, pulled back, good support, off we go. The zone below that is 57.50. Again, we published our zones every week since December 14th of 2009. It's a great tool to have in your toolbox because knowing where the areas of fixed support and resistance are when you're in a trade, it almost seems unfair, but it's not, okay? I'll just leave it at a great tool. See, as price came down, it spiked, but closed above it. When price comes down to a zone, we expect it to be support. When price moves up to a zone, we expect it to be resistance. Consolidation, most likely thing to happen. Rejection, second most likely. And then the least likely is the slice. Now, here's the slice, okay. On the pullback, it exceeded the zone. Typically what it will do when this move runs out of steam, it will retrace back to the zone that is sliced through and then continue in the direction of the slice. So it did all of that. It just pulled back a little, fur little further than it normally does. Okay. All right. Crude last night, long 58.30. And so 58.30, we had a swing high there, a little retracement, uh, made it up to 58.60. It's $300 per contract traded. From 58.50, 58.30, to 
5860. It's 30 ticks, $10 a tick. The short side was 5760. So we spiked it, found support at the zone. It's what we expect until proven otherwise. Resistance until proven otherwise. Here, look at how much time we spent trying to get through that 5750 zone. We got there at, let's see, on the 7th, we got there at 7 p.m. Eastern. And we didn't really pull away, you know. I mean, just consolidation. So, I'm not going to count all the candles, but you get the idea. Consolidation. That's what you're going to see 70 to 75% of the time. Consolidation. Um, the slice. I haven't seen a good rejection yet. I'll keep looking. I'll show you one. Uh, on, let's see, 5750. Okay, 5690 is the zone below that. 5690 slash 95. So price comes up, hits the zone, pulls back to the BBC. Actually, this is this is Friday. Where's the Sunday night open? Right there. This is where we open Sunday night. So since the Sunday night opened, we've not come back to test this zone. This wasn't a zone last week. These are this week's zones. So we open Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. Made a run at this zone. Spent all that time consolidating. Made it to the next zone. Spent all that time consolidating. And now we're here. Now right here, this bearish cross. Anytime you have a bullish or bearish cross that leads to an extended move like this one did, when price revisits that area, we expect that to be good resistance until proven otherwise, okay? And it was good resistance. This dynamic right here, what's happening, that's called a bullish cross, just like this is a bearish cross when the red line gets below the green line bearish. When the blue line gets above the green line, bullish. So right now, price is pulling back. And if you like FIBS, you don't have to buy the expensive FIB software because every platform has uh, free FIB tools. You don't have to spend months or years learning to master FIBS because in you shouldn't because it's not a standalone trading methodology. It can be a great tool. Uh, I use it usually just to make a point. We've got the 24%. That's where we're sitting on top of right now from this swing low to this swing high. We're sitting at the 24% FIB. Here's the 38 and right between is that bullish cross. So what's the high probability move from here? The price drops to the BBC and then gives us a leg to the upside. If the BBC fails to hold as good support, now we anticipate support until proven otherwise. So if we get the support we're looking for, that'll give us a trade to the upside. If the pullback doesn't hold, that will give us a trade on the short side. Again, the pullbacks hold more often than they don't, but eventually it has to not hold. Otherwise, you'd end up with a stagnant sideways market that isn't tradable. Okay. Once price gets below the BBC, we're looking for lower prices. When price gets above the BBC, We're looking for higher prices. Now, there's many, many ways to trade these markets. 
We certainly don't think our way is the only way. Uh, what I do think is it's the simplest way. Michael and I worked very hard for a very long time to put together a, a methodology, a strategy, a system, whatever you want to call it, that was simple. Trading's not easy, but it can be simple. It's hard for it to be simple, though, when you're dealing with, you know, a thousand different indicators and oscillators on your chart all screaming at each other. You know, half of them are saying go long and the other ones are saying go short. And I have enough voices in my head telling me what to do. I don't need a bunch of indicators on my chart screaming at each other. So we're minimalists. You know, at the end of the day, we're price action traders. But the indicators help you see what price is doing. And we don't try to outfox them, you know, it's not like chess where we want to be, you know, one move ahead. Uh, no, we want to understand what price is doing right now. And if we can clearly see that and understand what it's doing, why it's doing it, then we can know with certainty what the next high probability move is. And over the last 132 weeks, we've proven that 20% of the time, the market does something other than the next high probability thing. So you could, you know, put all kinds of other things on here. Uh, you could put on MACDs and stochastics and RSIs and Bollinger Bands and you could run some algorithms and it's not going to change this simple fact. This move down, if it finds support at the BBC and it holds more often than it doesn't, Okay, if it finds support here, it's going to give us a leg to the upside. And where's that leg going to go? Well, it's going to try to take out these highs. If it can overcome those highs, then it's going to try to take out that high. But on the move up, at some point, whether it's here or here or here, we'll reach a point where nobody's willing to pay one tick more, just like happened here. We ran up to 58.43. Nobody was willing to pay 58.44. When sellers see that nobody, that buyers have stopped buying, they're not willing to pay 58.44, then that's when they go to work. Okay. And shorting with futures is very much different than stocks. I'm sure the, the whole world now knows about shorting because of what happened with game stop and the short squeeze and all of that. CFRN was born out of a group of people, uh, Patrick Byrne being one of them, who we were trying to put us, we were trying to get the SEC uh, to stop naked short selling because small companies were having a hard time uh, once they went public, they were having a hard time growing because see, short selling is a legal thing. Naked short selling is not, and it was rampant. When you sell short, you have to borrow. I mean, it just makes sense. You can't sell what you don't own, okay? Because with stocks, you own the underlying security. That's not true with futures. So if you want to short a stock you don't own, and the broker, your broker, owns shares in their account, right? So in other words, there are other customers of that brokerage firm who are along that position. The broker, without asking you, can loan your shares to the guy going short. Now you bought that thing because you expect it to go higher. But a guy with deep pockets, who knows how to wink at the broker comes along and says, I don't want to short this thing. Okay, so the broker loans your long shares to the short seller so that they can short the stock. Now, here's where it got ugly. There's a three-day rule. That short has to be covered within three days. The, otherwise, it becomes a naked short position. Now, it's the DTTC's job to make sure that doesn't happen. 
and they were not doing their job. And Eagle Tech, and I could go on with the list of companies that got, they tried to destroy Overstock. Thankfully, Patrick had enough loyal shareholders and followers and friends, and they weren't able to, they, they were mad at Patrick because he went public uh, via Dutch auction. And I think Coinbase was going to do that. And Wall Street doesn't like that because when you go public with a Dutch auction, then normal people like you and I get access to the IPO. And investment banks say, that's not, no, that's not how the game's played. And so I think there was talk of Coinbase going that route and apparently somebody, you know, I don't know, pulled them into an alley and said, you better not. And so they've now changed. They're going to go the traditional route. Shorting is okay. But you are, you know, some people think there's, there's moral implications. Okay. It's intrinsically wrong to effectively bet you know, that a company is going to fail. It's trading. But when you're taking my long, I'm long a stock, and some guy comes along that wants to short it, you're going to use my long shares to loan to this guy so that he can be short? I mean, so that's how CFRN was born. We spent our first couple of years, from 2005 to 2007, doing everything. We had our little group, we had members testify before Congress, but the old boy network is pretty strong. And so does it still go on? Absolutely. Is it as bad as it ever was? Yeah. Does anybody do anything about it? No. Uh, so I just kind of washed my hands of stocks and I've been just dealing with futures ever since. Shorting with futures, there's no uptick rule. If the chart calls for it, you can be long. This is crude. You can be long crude and short crude in the same hour if that's what the chart calls for. Often you'll see when you go through all the trades in the alert channel, you'll see like a long on crude followed up hedge it short. It bounces to the upside, hits resistance, turns around, heads the other direction, triggers on the short side. And it's very common. You'll see it in the channel. So here's price coming down, doing the logical thing. Everything we do is based on logic. There's no secrets, no mystery. We're very transparent with everything we do. Now there's 20 minutes left in the life of this candle. When we hit the BBC, we'll be patient. We'll see what happens. The next candle, okay, if the next candle starts printing green, then we'll be interested potentially in a long position back up to these highs. Okay. All right. That's story on crude. Let's go to gold. Uh, let's go to the NQ first, then we'll go to gold. See that flat right there? It's no bueno. All, all the money that you made trading this, this is beautiful. Look at this. Leg, retrace, leg, retrace, leg, retrace, leg. And then we get a bearish cross. Okay, great. Now we're just going to do the exact same thing we did on the way up in reverse. Here we're buying the dips. Now that we've got our bearish cross, we're going to sell the rallies. So price bounces up to the BBC. The pullback holds more often than it doesn't. Gives us another leg to the downside. Pulls back to the BBC. Gives us another leg to the downside. And bullish cross. Okay. And that's when we came out of this uh, descending price channel that we had. 
the bearish cross gave us all of this. Bullish cross, now we're back to buying the dip. Okay. And when there's a lot of momentum in the market, sometimes it won't be able to pull all the way back to the BBC. So this is really a head fake, kind of, although we expect support where you see the zone. So support, it held, it consolidated. Leg, retracement, off we go. And that was the Sunday night Globex open right there. We gapped higher and then filled the gap. Okay, which brings us up to, see all this flat? All that money that you made, you know, buying the dips and selling the rallies last week, this is where too many traders just hand it all back. Because they, they, don't, they don't understand the dynamic at work here. And so, you know, they take a shot on the long side. And that doesn't work out. So then they take a shot on the short side and that doesn't work out. We don't take shots. Taking a shot is gambling, okay? This is a business based on probabilities. We know that. And so we only wanna be involved in the highest probability, lowest risk trade setups that we can find. And our strategy and indicators help you find those opportunities. So from here, what's the next high probability move? We had a leg, we had a retracement to the BBC. We caught a bounce. Now that bounce failed. By failing, I mean it didn't go up to challenge the high. That's weak. That shows a little weakness. So we'll be very careful here about going along. In fact, now that we're below the BBC, we're not even thinking about going along. Now, this is a previous weekly zone, but it's still in play, as you can see. Today's only Tuesday. So the zones come out Monday morning. So all of our traders will put their zones on the chart Monday morning when they're published, but you need to keep the old zones handy because they will still hold sway over the market up until you know Tuesday, Wednesday, and every now and then we come across an important price, important area, a weekly zone that stays in play for weeks. So now that we're below the BVC, price will drop to this old zone, it'll either hold or it won't. Let me find this week's zone. 13, got a zone this week. I'm just gonna push this one up, 13,694 slash 95. Below that's 13,587. Thirteen five eighty seven slash eighty eight. So those are this week's zones. So what we do? We went from the zone up to the zone. Zones are an area. Back up to the zone. A little head fake to the downside. We sliced, pulled back, tried to continue in the direction of the slice. Remember, as price moves up to a zone, we expect it to be good resistance. And it was, and it was. This is proven otherwise, but then it failed. Now we're back below the zone, back below the BBC. And so the window of opportunity right now is 13.663. Mm, down to 53, be conservative, 63 to 53. You could even say, keep them round numbers, 13,660 to 13,550. Yeah, from 60 to 50. That's 10 NQ points, $20 a point, it's $200 per contract traded. 
Once you earn the right to trade two contracts, then it would be $400. Our 2420 blueprint tells you when it's time to add an additional contract. You only add one at a time, and you only add contracts with profit you earned in the market. When you first start, we want you to put together 10 consecutive days in a row where you reach your goal in 10 trades or less. Once you do that, the blueprint will give you the green light to go live with one contract. Now your goal is to increase your account balance by $2,000. Then you'll get the green light to add a second contract. The difference between the first contract and the second contract is you're adding the second contract with profit you earned in the market. So the blueprint tells you when it's time for number three, number four, number five. So again, this area here, from 13,660 to 13,650, 10 points, $20 a point, $200 per contract traded. By the time you earn the right to trade five contracts, this would be a $1,000 move. Pendulum swings both ways. Very important. You must always have a physical stop in place. And with our alerts, we never want to risk more than $300 per contract per trade, less when possible, based on market structure. So the CTA last night on the NQ was 13706. Thirteen seven oh six, and we put in a swing high at seven thirty five. So twenty nine points. Uh, for the sake of math, call it thirty. Twenty dollars a point, six hundred dollars per contract traded. Once you've earned the right to trade two contracts, then it's twelve hundred. Okay. So here we go. This is the next high probability thing. 20% of the time, price will do something other than the next high probability thing. We'll come back and peek at it in a minute. Oh, there's questions in the chat box. Let me see what's in here. Dwayne, does the recommended risk per trade, $300, change depending upon the number of contracts being traded? It's three, that's a great question. It's $300 per contract, okay? So if you're trading two contracts, then you've got $600 of risk. It's $300 per contract. It's a good question. Uh, and then Mike says, now that I think about it, I believe you said it is 300 per contract. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> you told me to, in the next post, he said you can just disregard that question. So, sorry. Anyway, I'm glad I saw it. Glad I got you an answer. And then Mike B. asked, Wayne, have you been following the Maricopa County Forensic Audit? All 16 Republican senators signed a pledge to hold the county board in contempt, but when they had the vote... One of them voted. I No, honestly, Mike, I haven't. I haven't been following it. You probably know more about it than I do. Okay, so the line in the sand for this is 13. Six sixty to thirteen six fifty. So there's fifty, and there's sixty. And 
based on the last 132 weeks and 6,000, whatever it was, number of trades that I uh, gave you the number earlier, I showed it to you. 20% of the time, it won't work out. Instead of going to your target, you'll get stopped out. That's, that's the truth about trading, okay? You will get stopped out. Don't let anybody tell you different. Uh, there's always somebody out there pitching the Holy Grail. But trust me. Getting stopped out is as much a part of trading as breathing is a part of life. It's going to happen. Don't let it. Don't let it blow your mind, ruin your day. It's unrealistic expectations. That's a trader's worst enemy right there. And unfortunately, when people are brand new to trading, they they don't and they see all these outlandish promises on these different websites. They they don't they don't know that it's unrealistic. I mean, if it's on the internet, it must be true, right? No. Just kidding. You know better. So the swing low so far is 661.75. So if it, if it hits 60, the high probability is that it will go to 50. Now, it may go further. It might never trigger, number one. Once it triggers, okay, high probabilities that it will go to 50 and if it gets through 50 then the next spot in other words potential support or target number two target number three and then target number four and then the weekly trading zone so initial target second target third target fourth target see I just told you everything I know now I can't say anything <laughs> trading is not easy but it can be simple it's not quite that simple uh, there are a few things I can I can teach you but we don't have any upsells we're not the people who, when you need help, we try to sell you some other solution. When you become a passport holder, that's a lifetime membership, that's this, then we're done with you paying us. We don't have anything else to sell you. No upsells. I know it's hard to believe because the best prospect in any business, the best sales prospect is the person that just paid you. If you've ever bought anything off the internet, and I don't mean from uh, a reputable online retailer, although they're not, yeah, they could be guilty too. But you know what I'm talking about. You get an email, it's some kind of new software, some kind of something, and you're like, wow, $29.97, yeah, that's, you know, that's worth it. And so you get into, you know, the payment, you're checking out, right? And here come the upsells. I mean, you, you read their long email and it really did sound cool or clever. And you're like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll spend 29 for this. So they got you on the hook. And all you, now all you want to do is just check out and go play with the thing, whatever it is that you bought, some software or something. And then... Here it comes. For just 10 more dollars, you can unlock all of these other features. And they just kind of tell you, you know, you'd be stupid. That's what they tell you. They go, you just, without calling you stupid, they go, you'd be stupid if you didn't get this upgrade because you're going to get, you know, 10 times more or whatever, right? And so you're a little bit aggravated and you're like, well, I don't want to be stupid. Okay. All right. Okay, fine. So you click okay. And you assume you're going to go to the checkout, right? That you're going to be able to... Oh, no. But wait, there's more. And it goes on until you finally... You, just, you either just abandon your shopping cart or you say no. And then comes the pop-up. Are you sure? 
it's really hard not to abandon the shopping cart at that point. So anyway, and, and so whatever it is you end up spending that day, tomorrow they're going to sell your name and your email address to all their buddies that got other clever things to sell. Well, you know, you've been on the internet, you know. Anyhow, we, we won't do anything to insult your intelligence. We'll always treat you with dignity and respect. All we ask is that you treat us the same in return. And we'll have a great relationship. When you buy a passport, it's five grand. Forty-nine ninety-seven to be exact. Okay. You have access to the live training room every day, two hours a day, every trading day. You have access to the workshops on Thursday night, members only. You own the indicators. You get the weekly trading zones. You have access to the discussion groups. Everything we do, everything, today and tomorrow, is yours for life, lifetime membership. You won't spend any more money with us. And I don't think you'll ever, you'll never need to spend any more money with anybody else on anything that has to do with trading e-mini futures. Because we teach you how to use our strategy, how to use our indicators. And while Michael is teaching you that two hours a day in the morning, I'm sending you alerts around the clock so that you're able to actually put into practice what he's teaching you. And then over time, you actually learn to find the opportunities yourself. So you reach a point where you don't have to sit and wait for an alert to come out because it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. And that's the goal is that you reach a point where you spot the windows of opportunity just like I do just like Michael does. Now, it's a lifetime membership, so we hope that you'll hang around, be a part of the community, because we've got a great group of people that have gathered together. We speak the same language. We're all on the same page. We're using the same strategy. Um, we encourage one another. It's a very positive, upbeat environment. There are lots of places on the internet that have to do with trading and investing that are very negative. Everybody's got a chip on their shoulder. And oftentimes, you know, for good reason, they've been misled, whatever, you know. It's, it's very depressing. We have a, an environment that is positive and upbeat, okay? You'll always have somebody, if you have a rough day, there'll be somebody to encourage you. If you have a great day, people will applaud you, okay? Nobody, we don't have any of that jealousy stuff going on. Everybody learns the same method, the same strategy, so that we all are able to be on the same page. Okay, uh, I think the only thing we didn't cover is gold. Oh, gold and silver. So let's look at those real quick and wrap this thing up. Gold. Are these this week zones 36 mm. this week the zones at 33 34 now see that I always tell you zones are an area but we get so you know accustomed at times for that price just turns right at the zone that we forget it's an area but you got to remember it's an area because it won't always come down. And that's rejection, by the way. Price got rejected at the zone. So this is a last week zone. I'm just going to peel that out. The highest weekly zone this week for gold is 1870. 1833. 1820 slash 21. And below that is 1807 slash 0. Support. Support to the zone, to the zone. Get above the zone, pull back, support. Leg, retrace, 
leg retrace. See right here how we put in a lower high? See, here's a high, here's a higher high, and a higher high. And then we get a lower high. That's your first indication that this little uptrend as defined on a 30 minute chart may be over. And then sure enough, price closes on this candle below the BBC. See on the way up, how everything closed above the BBC, then this candle right here. First you get the lower high, then you get a close below the BBC, and look what the next candle does. It drops right to the zone. From 1840 down to 34, it's 33, 34 is the zone. So, you know, maybe you wanted to get below the low of this candle here, you know, just to be real conservative. Okay, so call it 1838 down to 34. It's four points. Gold pays $100 a point, $400 per contract traded. Once you're in the right to trade two, 800 okay but just make sure you don't go live before you're ready put together those 10 consecutive days in a row where you reach a goal in 10 trades or less please because you don't want to blow up another account once you have those 10 consecutive days under your belt when you go live just go live with one no reason to go live with more than one use that one contract that you've qualified to trade live. Use that to increase your account balance by two grand. And then when the blueprint says it's okay to add a second contract, you do it with profit you earned in the market. So whatever one contract made you, it's now double because it's got two contracts. And the, the really beautiful thing about that second contract, you're adding it with profit you earned in the market. It's the first real sign that this time is different. This time, you're profitable. The fact that you were able to qualify to go live and then increase your account balance by two grand and add a second contract with the profit you earned in the market. Don't let it go to your head. Keep your head down. Shoulder to the wheel, nose to the grindstone, all that stuff. Now, even after you go live, okay, it doesn't mean you've arrived. You're going to still have rough patches. Anytime you have two consecutive days in a row where you don't reach your goal in 10 trades or less, you should come out of the live market, back into the simulator, the demo account. It's not a walk of shame. By any stretch, it's a smart business decision because you need to figure out what happened. So come out alive, back in the sim, immediately book a mentoring session with me or Michael or both of us. Let us, in a private go-to meeting environment, go over the trades you took with you and see if we can spot something. You know, We'll help you figure out what happened. It, sometimes it's this simple right here. You tried trading this. And that's a no-no. You know, other times it'll be that there was something about the strategy or whatever that somehow you didn't fully understand or you just missed seeing something that you should have seen. But we want to nip it in the bud. So anytime, once you go live, if you have two days in a row, you don't reach your goal, go back to the simulator, not a walk of shame, book a mentoring session. We'll help you figure it out. Once you get your confidence back, then you just go right back out to where you left off. I mean, if you've already earned the right to trade three contracts, then you have a couple rough days. We'll do what we need to do to help you straighten it out, trade and sell a couple days, get your confidence back, and then, you know, step right back out into the live account where you left off. Okay. Only add one at a time and only add with profit you earned in the market. Okay. Now, we had talked about the Russell earlier since we're on this chart, uh, price got back below the trigger. Remember we said it triggered once, triggered twice, got below the trigger, third trigger. Now it actually triggered here and it's continuing here. 
the entry was $22.99. And this third trigger has taken us up to 20, almost to $23.03. At $23.03, that'll be four points at $50 a point, $200 per contract traded. Okay, back to gold where we were. Last night's CTA for gold was long at or above 1837. This was the Globex open last night until 1837. Okay, 1837. From 1837, we ran up to 44.8. So that's $700 per contract traded. Now, this little black line I haven't talked about is the step line. On a long trade, it should be on the left side of blue and climbing. When the move, the trade you're in, starts to run out of steam, this step line will go from the left side to the right side. And what you're now looking for on a long trade is you're looking for the first red candle that closes below the step line after it crosses over. So the closing price of that candle is 1841.3. So if you didn't take profit over here, you know, if you just stayed with it, for whatever reason, it's your business, your choice, your decision. This is the chart telling you you should take profit. Now, yes, it continued to go higher, but the idea is that you know you don't want to give back all of this because you earned it. You didn't win it, you earned it. The short side for gold was 1829. Down here. That could come into play later in the session, but we don't have that much longer left in today's session. And then tonight, shortly after the Globex open, the new, t the new CTAs will come out because tonight is 6 p.m. Eastern. That starts the Wednesday session. Okay, so that's the long side. This is the short side. One market left. See, and none of these pullbacks came back to the trigger. They just pull back to the BVC. Remember the pullback holds more often than it doesn't? Until on this one, see, we had a high, higher high, higher high, lower high. We're back below the trigger now. However, not all triggers are created equal. Over here, when we triggered, we had blue and climbing. Okay. That's what you want for a long trade. If you were to take this trigger here, it's like spitting, you're tugging on Superman's cape and spitting into the wind. Because you got red and falling. And on a move up, we expect the BBC to be good resistance, just like we expect it to be support on the pullback, you know, from above. From below, when we pull up, we expect it to be resistance. So not all triggers are created equal. Very good. No, that's simple. And the final market, silver. Last night, CTA for silver. Consider being long, 27.54. Okay, the open last night was right here. I'm looking for 27.54. Okay, so there's 27.54. So this initial move took us up to 58. So that's four pennies. Two pennies is a hundred bucks. Price got back below the trigger, but got red and falling right overhead. 
Anyhow, that was the initial trigger. Uh, it actually went up to 72. It went from 54 to 72. Uh, it's 18 cents. It's $900 per contract traded. Now, got back below the trigger, but you're going along into what is potentially resistance. In fact, what did it do? It pushed it right back down. This candle, the swing low of this candle, was 27.525. So that trigger, you're still dealing with red and falling. So while you don't want to get back in at the trigger, okay, as we take out these highs, or even this high, okay, and then the short side was 27.26. Twenty-seven twenty-six, and the low was twenty-seven thirteen. So, thirteen pennies, two pennies is a hundred bucks. So six hundred and fifty dollars per contract traded. Now silver is volatile; margins are high. All trading is risky. You can lose all of your money and then some when trading futures. Never trade without a hard stop. And always check with a licensed investment professional before making any investment decision, okay? Don't throw your money away. You worked too hard for it. Now, you may feel that you've, you know, wasted a lot of money, you bought a lot of things, shiny objects on the internet that were going to make you the next trading superstar, and, and they didn't turn out to be what you maybe thought they were going to be, okay? That doesn't have to be money wasted if you think about it properly. Each one of those experiences taught you what doesn't work. So let, let those experiences become learning experiences. Okay. I tried this. It didn't work. I tried this. It didn't work. So you know what doesn't work. If you've never taken a trial with us, go to eminitrainingschool.com. Take the trial, five days, no credit card required. We'll treat you just like a member for five days. At the end of the five days, you can make a well-informed, intelligent decision if what we do is right for you. If it's not, then you're always welcome to be a part of the audience. Come hang out with us in the afternoons. Talk you know, with us in the, the public discussion group. But I think if you come and take the trial, and if you apply yourself during the trial, that means participate. That means get the charts up and running, get the indicators indicating, ask questions in the training room each morning. Practice, practice, practice. Nobody's watching, nobody's keeping score, nobody's judging you, okay? You know, throw yourself into this, immerse yourself so that at the end of five days, you really will be able to make a well-informed decision if what we do is right for you. And if it is, then we'd love to have you as a part of the family. Time now for our good word for the day. Yesterday, we talked about protecting your mind. Today, Let's talk about making your life count for God. Because after all, it is he who gave us life. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In Mount Hope Cemetery in Hiawatha, Kansas, you'll find several large gravestones erected by John Melvin Davis. Davis began his working life as a lowly hired hand and managed to amass a considerable fortune. In the process, he didn't make many friends, nor was he close to his wife's family since they thought she had married beneath herself. Embittered, he vowed not to leave them a cent. When his wife died, 
Davis erected an elaborate statue depicting her sitting with him on opposite sides of a love seat. He was so pleased with it that he planned a second monument showing his wife kneeling to place a wreath at his future graveside. Then he had a sculptor place a set of wings on her back. One idea led to another until he had spent a quarter of a million dollars on tributes to his wife and himself. When people asked him to contribute to the local hospital or a swimming pool for children, the old miser would say, what has this town ever done for me? Davis spent his life's fortune on statues and died at 92 as a lonely, grim-faced resident of the workhouse. And you may wonder what happened to his monuments. Each and every one of them is slowly sinking into the Kansas soil. This is a true story. Victims of time, vandalism, and neglect. Memorials to spite and self-centered living. I suppose there's a certain poetic justice in the fact that within a few years, they'll all be gone. Only one person attended Davis's funeral. Horace England, the tombstone salesman. Don't let a similar thing happen to you. Make your life count. Make it count for those you love, for those who love you, and make it count for God. Because when it counts for God, it counts for eternity. And that's our good word for the day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.